Zachariah chapter four. Uh, we are doing the whole chapter today. So it's only, uh, there's only 14 verses, so it's not a huge amount. So who wants to read that? So when do you read? Who wants to pray? Read in the hot seat. Read in the hot seat. Can I have a go? Do you want to pray? Is that okay? Absolutely. Come on. You can have a go, mate. Of you can. Hi. Give it my go. <laughs> I volunteered to go to the chopping board, as you see. <laughs> <laughs> to the chopping board, I'll see it. All right, so Carlos, you're going to pray. So yeah. Wendy's going to read, and then Carlos, you will pray after Wendy has read. Okay. okay. Sure. Let's go. Okay. And the angel who talked with me came again and woke me like a man who was awakened out of his sleep. And he said to me, what do you see? I said, I see and behold a lampstand all of gold with a bowl on the top of it and seven lamps on it with seven lips on each of the lamps that are on the top of it. And there are two olive trees by it, one on the right of the bowl and the other on its left. And I said to the angel who talked with me, what are these, my Lord? And the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, do, not, do you not know what these are? I said, no, my, I said, no, my Lord. Then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forward the top stone amid shouts of grace, grace to it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice and shall see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. These seven are the eyes of the Lord, which range through the whole earth. Then I said to him, what are these two olive trees on the right and, and the left of the lampstand? And a second time I answered and said to him, what are these two branches of the olive trees? which are beside the two golden pipes from which the golden oil is poured out. He said to me, do you not know what these are? I said, no, my Lord. Then he said, these are the two anointed ones who stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Thank you. Yeah, Lord, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for, for each of us. Um, the gathering that we're having along with the people that are listening to this to this service. Uh, and we would like to just thank you for your love and for and we, we pray we pray that we give you glory with our actions, our thoughts, and our lives, so that you become who you are, the center of our lives and our merciful God, through whom we have eternal life by means of our Lord Jesus Christ who is sitting at the right hand side of the Father, who is blessing us as we speak through our thoughts so that we can enjoy the blessings and the wonderful opportunity to be learning together from Mark as we dive into your word, learning with every verse that we read praying that you will open our understanding to understand these scriptures so that we can apply them in our lives, just as Solomon did with his wisdom as you open his heart to a beautiful world of humility and of praise for you in the aspect of this life. So we may be gathered together here to enjoy learning and to enjoy growing in the truth of your knowledge and your word. We thank you in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ and ask us to bless us all as we talk about you through the Holy Scriptures. In, your, in Jesus' name, we pray and thank you. Amen. 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 Thanks, Carlos. All right. Why don't we uh, we'll do a quick recap before we go into uh, chapter 4. 
So in chapter one, we looked at that in two parts. First part, who remembers what is the key verse? Come to you. Return to me and I will return to you. So return to me and then I will return to you, which implies what? Repentance. Repentance. We weren't, we weren't with him in the first place. Well, he's not with he's he not with about. the people of um, yeah. well, Judah because they're not with him. So if you return to me, then I will return to you. So following on from there, we see the vision of the horsemen. So uh, verse seven onwards uh, through to seventeen. What was that about? The horsemen doing the surveillance of the earth, reconnaissance, doing a survey of what governments were doing, reporting back, yeah. reporting back. What was the report? Divid doubles. They were um, not building the house. They were no, that's Haggai. No, that's Haggai. They're at peace. They're, they're at rest. Peace. They're at ease. They're at peace. Mm. They're at rest. That's right. When they weren't, were they? Because uh, Israel's struggling and uh, the nations are saying, hey, we're at rest. And because of that, verse 15, God is exceedingly angry. So we see in verse two that God is angry with the with, with Judah, with Judah's um, ancestors. Now he's jumped. So twenty five hundred years into the future, this is going into the tribulation. Now God is angry with the nations because the nations are oppressing Israel, people of God. It goes over into the verses eighteen to. 21 and we have the four horns and the four craftsmen or the four blacksmiths what's that about the angels that are holding that judgment uh well you've got the nations of the horns who are troubling israel oh, yeah and then you've got the blacksmiths or the craftsmen who are angels that then smite the, the nations who are troubling israel so again tribulation language it's all reserved for the tribulation then we go into chapter two. So we've got the measuring line. What's that about? The city of Jerusalem. City of Jerusalem. Well, well it's, it's, it's Israel and south um, more widely, isn't it? And God okay. is saying further on down here in verse nine, I'm gonna shake, I'm, I'm gonna shake my hand over them. They're gonna become plunder, et cetera, et cetera. They're gonna know that I'm Lord. Uh, we go down into verse 11, that through that, the nations are going to join themselves to the Jews. It's not that the nations are joining themselves to the Jews, as in um, to Judaism or to Israel, but rather they are, they are joining with the Jews to Christ. So they are now acknowledging Jesus Christ. And because of that, because of that, the promise is that um, they shall be my people and I will dwell in their midst. So you will know that I'm the Lord of hosts who is sent you so the whole point and purpose of this is god is positioning not just israel but also the nations for the grand finale which is essentially the tribulation and at the end of the tribulation jesus christ returns but through the tribulation many come to salvation so then chapter three we did that last week what's that all about it jumps it jumps ahead again so you've got Joshua, who's a high priest. He's standing before, before God and he's in filthy rags and God takes away or calls to say to the angel, take away his filthy rags and give him clean rags, put a clean turban on his head, uh, clean, give him clean garments, put a clean turban on his head. Uh, Satan is, is, is uh, accusing him. God, Jesus Christ, rebukes Satan. And he says, no, he's a branch that's been plucked out of the fire. So this is judgment now. So it's gone beyond tribulation into the judgment. And so here, Joshua, he is the high priest. He represents Israel who are unclean, but through the works of Christ, by faith, through grace, they've become clean. Christ has, so the, instead of them standing there in their own works as filthy rags or their own righteousness as filthy rags, they now stand there under the works of Christ. In fact, Joshua, this, the name Joshua also is the name Jesus Christ. So essentially what happens here is Jesus Christ is standing before God on behalf of not just Israel, but also the, the whole of the nations, every nation. And so when we stand before God in Christ, it's as if Christ was standing there in our place. Well, he is there in our place. So we stand in his works, not in our works. So you see that, uh, you know, the transition here. So 
no longer do, does Israel stand before God um, in relation to their own works, as neither do we, but rather we stand there, those who put faith in Christ, stand there in confidence of what Christ has done, not what we've done, not what we do. So we see there that this is a, a salvation passage pointing to the, the judgment. And then so all the way through from um, chapters one through to three, we see it, it starts by taking in taking on board um, some things that are happening for Judah there and then, so for uh, Zachariah's audience. He uses something that's happening there and then he springboards into the future, two and a half thousand years into the future, into our time or just before our time. And of course, the judgment here is a little bit further on again. So using something natural, something that's actual, and then using that springboard or leap 2,500 years into the future. And this is what happens also in chapter four. So remember, there are eight visions going on here. So these eight visions, it, 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 they're, um, one succeeds the next. But as we see here in chapter four, it's not a consistent one vision like what John had in the, for the revelation. There's a, there's a vision and it stops and there's another, then it stops and then there's another, then it stops. We see in chapter four here that um, verse one, and the angel who talked with me came to me and woke me like a man who's awakened out of a sleep. So he's asleep. He's not having a vision at this, at this particular time. So he's been woken and he even makes a point. It's not like I've been woken out of my sleep. So you know what you're like when you, when you first wake up, you're a bit groggy, etc. But I can tell you, if you're standing before an angel or an angel's talking to you, you'll wake up real fast. <laughs> you know, it, it, whatever, whatever grogginess was there would be seen. You know, you're going, whoa, Dang, not again. You can imagine it. So this guy has eight visions, so eight encounters with the angel. And the, the language going backwards and forwards is generally, generally up until this point, numerous times now, Every time the angel shows Zachariah something, Zachariah goes, what is that? But this time, the angel says to Zachariah, do you know what this is? And he's, he's referring to uh, the, um, the candlestick and the olive trees. Do you know what this is? And then four or five times more throughout the passage, Zachariah doesn't know what it is. And so each time he says, what is these? What are these? What are these? What are these? And so you've got this interaction going on. So interestingly enough, when uh, the angel says to Zechariah, do you know what these are? In reference to the candlesticks, the lampstands, and also the olive tree. Now, he should have known because these are Jewish symbols, um, symbols, specifically, of course, the lampstand. He should have known what that was. But even then, so there's something more going on here, something something much more than, um, you know, just the... the uh, the, the imagery here that would be used in, in, in everyday worship. Now the imagery here is worship. You've got the you've got the candlesticks, you've got the lamps, um, you've got the olive trees, you've got the temple, reference to the Holy Spirit as well, God's power, God's anointing, etc. So it all, it's all about worship. It's, and of course it's all pointing to Jesus Christ. We're going to get there in, in, in a moment. But as I say, there's a lot more going on here than just building a temple. Now we see the references to that um, several times, specifically where it um, narrows in on Zerubbabel. Uh, I think three, four times Zerubbabel is mentioned in this passage. We see him in verse six, we see him again in verse seven, uh, we see him again in verse nine, uh, we see him again in verse 10. So four times, four times he's mentioned here which is specific because it's Zerubbabel here who's building the, the second temple. Now, remember what happened. They were released by Darius to go back into the land to build the temple. And, and then um, another prophet who enters the scene, speaking to the same people at the same time about the same thing for, for the same reason. Who was that? Haggai. And oh. what was Haggai's message? What did Haggai say? Okay. Or consider ways. So, so Zechariah says, um, return to me and I'll return to you. Haggai says, consider ways. So basically the same thing. What's happening in, in, in um, through Haggai, the, the message of prophecy specifically, what's he addressing? What is God addressing through the prophet Haggai? What's going on there? The building of the temple? 
And the building, what, what did they do? Why, why are they considering their ways? Why, why, why is they it cool? They thought it was works. They were making their own houses. And so they had forsaken the temple, right. rebuilt, hadn't they? Mm -hmm. So they stopped building it. And you remember what um, the leaders had said? We can quickly turn back there. It's only one page back. It's in um, chapter one. They repented, didn't they? They did repent. Do you remember what the leader said? No. The leader said that it's not time to build the temple where God says it is time, which is why he says consider your ways. This is a couple of times. Consider your ways in verse 5 and again in verse 7. And so God, so the leaders are saying who've been released by Darius to go back into the Holy Land to build the temple. They build the altar first, and then they build the temple, then they build the walls. So that's where, of course, you know, Ezra and Nehemiah come in. But they don't. They start lining their own pockets, and God um, says, well, your pockets have, you know, like they've got holes in them, whatever you put in, blows out the other side, because I blow on everything that you do, because you'll build, you're too busy. You've forsaken me again. You're forsaking, you're not doing, you're not being obedient to what I've called you to do. Instead, you're trying to line your own pockets. Now, then, we see in in chapter two, or well, chapter one still, from 12 to 15, still Haggai, that there is a blessing, and then the, the chapter two goes on to the same, there is a blessing for obedience. So if you do what I have told you to do, I'm going to bless you. So this is all about the temple. So now we're back in chapter four again of Zechariah. It's about the temple, the literal temple, the literal rebuilding of a temple. Now, they got back into building the temple and it took another four years for them to complete that, uh, that project. But this has got a lot more to do than with the second temple, as I said before. This, has got to, this is speaking about the next temple also. It's talking about the third temple, the tribulation temple that's going to be built. And then, of course, we go further on the field from that. There's another temple following that, and that's the one that Christ brings down from heaven when he sets up the millennial kingdom. So in this passage, again, as in the other passages, it's a big leap from what's happening 2,500 years ago to what's just in front of us today. Mm. Now, there's, there's a I number of... Can I ask a question yeah. about temple and the millennium? Yeah. Is that coming down from heaven? Yeah. Yeah, we're heaven because when Jesus comes down... Jerusalem, Jerusalem, so Zechariah 14, Jerusalem will be aloft. It'll be above, so the new Jerusalem. Is this in the millennium? Yes. This is not in the world to come? No, in the millennium. So Zechariah 14. So Jerusalem comes down. It's aloft. It's above. It's just above um, the actual Jerusalem. So in the millennium, the millennials won't be able to get into the city, whereas a promise to the one uh, in the last chapter the promise to, we can see it here, uh, the promise to the one that um, we see in verse 7, so chapter 3, verse 7, thus says the Lord of hosts, if you walk in my ways and keep my charge, then you will rule my house, you'll have charge in my courts, and I'll give you the right to, um, to access amongst those who are standing here. So the, the, the people who obey Christ, who go into the millennium, they have the glorified bodies, they will have right of access. They'll be able to go in and out of the, of, of the temple. And the city at will. The millennials won't be able to. Even in, those that are not Israelites. Yes. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So we see in again in chapter 2, verse 11, and many nations who join themselves to you, uh, to the Lord on that day, shall be my people, and I'll dwell in your midst and you shall name it. So, yeah, so there's no distinction between um, Jew and Gentile. Mm. Any who's joined to Christ in the millennium who are in that glorified state, they will have free access into the new city and, of course, the temple. However, the millennials, they won, chapter 14, so we're jumping well ahead now. Chapter 14 states that once a year they get to go, or they are, they are commanded to go to Jerusalem and learn the ways of God, so they have to worship God at the Feast of Tabernacles or Feast of Booths, and they have to get to know God, learn the ways of God through the people of God. The people of God will be there. Of course, those who are glorified in Christ, ruling and reigning with him, having free access to go in and out of the temple. So it'll be a lot. It'll come down from heaven. So the new temple will replace the 
a tribulation temple. So the millennial temple will replace a tribulation temple. So the what, tri tribulation temple is a defiled temple. Yeah, I understand all that. Mm. So what, what scripture alludes to the aloofness? I, I, yeah. I agree 14. with everything else. Chapter 14. 14 we'll get there. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get there, though. We're, wide, we're getting wide so, away. But it's all right. But it's all right. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. I'll, 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 we'll narrow in on some verses for it. It's... um. Okay, so back to 14, back to uh, rather 4, chapter 4. <clears throat> so a lot, a, lot of, a lot of stuff's going on here in this passage. Uh, as I say, so it has, uh, it's, it's applicable, relevant to the people of the day, so Zachariah's audience, but specifically for us, this has got to do with the tribulation period. Now, what jumps out? As we read through the passage, there should be a number of things that just jump out straight away. There should be a number of questions that um, are raised. My first question was what you've already covered. Yep. Is why doesn't he, as a Jew, know all these things that he keeps saying? What is this? Yeah, because he's looking at something yes. into the future. So, yes, he would understand what a menorah was. He just probably wouldn't understand what it represents. That's right. So, so he's, seeing, he's seeing a menorah. He, he identifies you know he knows what it is but he just doesn't know how it flies mm -hmm. you know this is something a little bit different to what he would find generally in a you know in a temple mm -hmm. yeah okay so what about the menorah what is a menorah what does it represent what's it used for oh look at that wow <laughs> right so in jewish so so the spirit of god which is which verse is that in here it's right here in verse 10. Uh, yeah, these seven are the eyes of the Lord, and they range through. The, so it's got the reference to the seven, the seven. So seven is what in scripture? Perfection. Perfection. What is it? What does a candle do? It shines a light. What does a candle require for the flame to flicker? Oil. Oil. So <laughs> it's all the way through scripture, right? It's all the way through scripture. What about what about in uh, the book of Revelation? What is a candlestick representative of there? Churches. The churches. The churches. The, seven, the, church, the seven churches. And we might remember uh, Ephesus. Uh, they were warned specifically that if they didn't repent, but didn't return to their first love, they would what? Snuffed out, lose their candlestick, <laughs> it's <was> taken <laughs> away from them. Yeah. And guess what? The one who has the candlestick, the one who conquers, that one gets to enter into the garden of paradise, the garden of God. That one gets to eat off the tree of life. But if you don't have your candlestick, you don't have access, you don't have um, then the um, the means to be able to eat from the tree of life, which means, guess what? You're in trouble, right? Mm. It's not a good day. Um, when it comes to light, like the Lord Jesus is the light of the world, and we used to wish a candle just by the disease is combustion because mm -hmm. it's part of the process of lighting up anything. Without that, without oxygen, you cannot light up anything. Yeah. And that is the bread of in my, in my way of ruach. Uh, God's breath in Hebrew. Which is the bread of God in, in uh, through Christ, so that we can light up the world because that's what he got is so us yeah. by the love of God, yeah, by God's love. So the light of the world, the, the, the light is something that is amazing because it is what illuminates our lives. And, that light there's darkness so it's um, worth developing that we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more because there's a few more questions that we've got to ask from this passage before we go but we're going to yeah, we're going there to um, tell us definitely this to this. Yeah. yeah so um look at um look at verse um so verses two through to three really uh four as well what do you see See, here's, here's the introduction to the, the lampstands, the gold bowls, and the olive trees. And we see here that the uh, the prophet is asking, he said, well, what are these? He, he doesn't know. And then, of course, then the angel says, well, well don't you know what these are? And I know we should. But, of course, he's not making the connection between what he's seeing and the, the, uh, the, uh, the relevance of it in relation to the future. But... 
you'll know here now that the angel doesn't answer the question. So he goes into something else. What, what, what's it, what, what does he go on to? What does he start um, narrowing in on? It's not the, the, the temple, right? The temple. So the prophet asks the just... angel, what, what is this in relation to the olive trees? What is this in relation to the lampstands? The, the angel doesn't answer the question. He goes straight to the temple. Why Why do you think he does that? There's a reason for it. But doesn't he doubt him first when he says, do you not know who they, what these are in this five? Yeah, well, so it's, 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 a, it's, a, um, it's a statement, more yeah. of a question. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like, in, like, it's like, Debbie, you should know what this is. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So here's the prophecy, doesn't it? So he goes into the he goes into the temple. Why does he go into the temple? Why does he not answer the question? So so Robert's asking, what is this? And he doesn't answer it. He goes into the temple. I can't see how he's going into the temple. Well, he's talking about Zerubbabel. So Zerubbabel is the he's the leader. Oh, rebuilding the temple. Yeah, so that's right. So he says, so verse uh, say six on. Mm. So so he goes into, talks about it's a rubber bill, not by might, not by power, but the spirit. So it's in reference to the building of a temple, verse, going to verse 7, and then, yeah, verse 7. Um, so talking about the top stone, etc., and grace, grace to it, that's talking about building the temple. Um, oh, so that's verse 10 about also, the temple. verse 10, the same thing. So when they were building the temple, there were some who were looking on it and they're going, oh, this is not so good because I remember the first temple. Uh, Solomon's temple, and they're saying, "Hey, this is nothing like that." It's no. And he says, "Don't despise you no know, small beginnings." You know, we we hear that verse getting kicked around on all sorts of strange sorts of ways, but it's to do with the temple. You know, the, the te first temple didn't look anywhere near as good as the uh, the second temple doesn't look anywhere near as good as the first temple. So this way, saying, uh, God is also saying that, "Hey, um, this temple." Uh, you're doing it through my ability. It's my. This is my desire. I'm. It's not even your motivation. You don't even want to do it. We saw that from Haggai. They 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 couldn't stay with the um with the plan. They were moving away, doing their own thing. God's saying, "This is my. This is my call. This is my desire. This is my wish. I'm the one that's causing this to happen. I'm the one that's motivating you to do this. You can't even do this in your own strength. I'm the one who's doing it through you." It's not by your power. It's not by your might. It's by my power and my might is what this, again, you hear that verse kicked around a fair bit as well. But this is what God is saying. I am motivating you and empowering you to do this. I'm building it through your hand. We see uh, further down, um, where does it say through um, Zerubbabel's hands? Verse 9. Verse 9. There it is, verse 9. Well, a good spot. Uh, and then we see also that um, the ones, verse 10, the ones who despise the day of small beginnings, they're the ones who are going to rejoice at the end when they see it. So this is all about the temple, right? So it's, all, it's a literal rebuilding of a temple. So here the angel um, almost ignores the prophet in relation to the questions, what are the, the, the um, candlesticks and what are the olive trees? going straight into the temple. Why does he do that? There's a reason for it. What do you think? Think forward. Think tribulation. What's going on here? Because this is, this is using, again, it's something natural, something that's um, happening at the time, but he's using it in an allegoric way to be able to present something much bigger. Is he using it as like an, an analogy to go into the presence of Christ? There's a, well, there is a, there's a pattern mm -hmm. and there's an order of mm -hmm. things that are going to happen here. This, this, is, this is very, very interesting what's going on here. It's actually caused me to um, correct something. I uh, will go, we'll go into it. See, see, the temple's being built first, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then, so after this, uh, verse 11, then he goes back into the olive trees, right, in the, in the lampstands, verse 11. And the question's being asked, we can see it in verse 12 again, you know, who are these and what are these, etc. Uh, verse 13, do you not know what these are? Again, so he's asking the prophet a second time, do you not, do you not know what these are? 
And then he answers the question finally in verse 14. There's the two anointed ones who stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Now, we know that the second temple was built, right? So the second temple was built. Mm -hmm. It was built. It was um, it was modernised. Um, it was became like the eighth um, um, wonder of the world. It was, you know, some magnificent structure. It was destroyed in 70 AD. Nothing has been uh, built to replace it since. Something will be rebuilt to replace it, and the tribulation hasn't happened yet. So we know that that, that happened. What about these olive trees? Who are they? The anointed what witnesses? Revelation 11. See how it jumps? But how do we know that, that that's what it's talking about? Because they're the anointed well, it ones. It says anointed ones. So yeah. it, it, there, the is no other, there is no other explanation. The two branches, the olive trees. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's, the two cherubs. Yeah, because that's been referred to in other um, books of the so Bible. So who are the two yeah, olive trees? Yeah. yeah. They, these are the two witnesses from Revelation chapter 11. Mm. Now, they think, so think on that for a minute. So that being the case, that being the case, the temple has to be built first and then the olive trees, the two witnesses, the two anointed ones, then they are addressed after the temple has been built. But that's What's the third happening? temple, not the second The temple. third temple, that's right. So, so why, why why we talk about the second temple here? So it's a jump. Because, that's why he jumped. So the old, Antichrist hasn't taken way. his position in the temple until it's built. No, but but maybe no. who are the who who mm. could be the anointed ones in the time of the second temple? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's, there, well, there wasn't. That that's the whole point. There there wasn't. There's there's no explanation for that prior to the two witnesses arriving on the scene so in the tribulation. That's with John the Baptist. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> but they're not, but but these these but ones they represent they represent God oh, and sorry. they're standing by Jesus Christ. They're the anointed <laughs> ones. So the, the olive trees, so these are people, these aren't trees. So yeah. there is there's a symbolism going on. So it mm. pushes two and a half thousand years into the future. So huge leap into the future. I don't and know why not understand anything. <laughs> but like, isn't that incredible? Because the Lord did that to make sure no one destroyed the manuscripts. But, all these but years. think about think about it like this, Sharon. Chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, all do the same thing. They all start off. This is why we keep going back and, and relaying that foundation. They all start off by looking at something that's literally happening in the day, and then they springboard into the future, into the tribulation specifically, chapter three, that goes further behind. That's, that's at the end of the tribulation. That's when Jesus Christ comes back and it's judgment, uh, judge, where Jesus judges the Jews and the Gentiles, separate judgments. Mm. So that's what that's talking about. So, so the two witnesses in Revelation refer to as olive trees in Revelation? The adultery, uh, sodomy, um, sodomy, they do, yeah. yeah. Sodomy. Sodomy, is that what you said, adultery? No, no, do the, yeah, yeah. Do the anointed yeah. ones in Revelation, are they yeah. referred to as, as olive oh, trees? Oh, olive trees, no, no, but it's just, it's again, it's all symbolic. It's all, it, yeah. so, yeah, it's. <laughs> it's <laughs> so the, the book of Revelation. It's regular Christian. The book, the book of Revelation. <laughs> The book of Revelation, oh, it's, all, it's all symbolic. Change. So it's yeah, understanding right. what the, what the symbols mean. It's understanding yeah. what the symbols uh, mean. It is. Revelation 11, 4, these, the two olive trees and the two lampstands right. that stand before the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it does make yeah, there you go. There well, you it's go. only just common sense, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not well, not really, because most people. Most people. That's not common. Yeah, that's right. Unless, unless you, um, unless you spend a, a fair amount of time in there, it's no. Well, that's the first thing I thought. But what about the golden yeah. pipes? I didn't think anything else. Scripture interpreting the scripture. But what about the golden pipes? We don't have that in Revelation. What's that? Well, one two golden pipes. No, no, but it's it's all it's all no, the same thing. One place from another. Which are beside the two golden pipes, from which the golden oil. Yeah, yeah. Again, again, it's all. It's all um, just just artifacts they use within worship. So, so this is all pointing towards worship. It's all pointing towards worship. So the golden pipes don't mean anything in particular. No. Well, well, the pipes. They, these are pipes, right? They come out of the, the, the tree. They're the pipes there. Okay. Yeah. 
And and so and also so you talk about so the branches that come from the tree, right? The two olive trees, and you got the branches. Well, think about that light of Christ. Christ is the vine, and we are the branches, right? right. So it's yeah. the offspring, or it's the offshoot of, yeah. right? Uh, Israel with the branches that were cut off. We, you know, the natural branches. We were the we were the wild branches that were grafted it's all so it's all symbolic yeah. it's all symbolic and the branch popped out of the fire yeah 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 that's right the brand that's right so the branch is kind of like a group of believers or yeah yeah there's Israel. Yeah. it's israel so it's all symbolic so everything we see in here is symbolic the church because well, Israel the doesn't get branches. grafted in. We're the wild. We're the wild. Oh, wild branches. 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 Wild and you cut them right back, and the harder you cut them back, the better. Yeah. yeah. All right. The better they come. That's the well, discipline preacher. that God gives us as Christians. Yeah. Look at look look at the look at this. <laughs> he uh, cuts us back. Yeah. I need some cutting back. Okay. It's all to make me better. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right so so we can see we can see the leap it, it's you know it's, it's um already said it's, it's it's common sense and it's pretty obvious because <laughs> it's, there's only other well, only one other thing would be way of speaking no, okay it's, it's the two trees <laughs> yeah the so, tree of life so what we see here, what we see here, this is this is quite this is quite amazing. This is quite amazing. But here's here's a correction I've got to make. I've always said, I've always said that the um, two witnesses appear at the beginning of the tribulation, at the commencement of the, the tribulation temple rebuild, and they die halfway through the tribulation. It's the other way around. They appear when the tribulation, when the tribulation is built. Well, I'm going to show you why. And the tribulation is built. So, the tribulation <laughs> temple is built. Yeah, yeah. So, when that is built, this is quite yes. fascinating. Then, Excellent. then they will complete the last um, half of the tribulation. So, what's happening is you've got within the temple. So, who takes a seat in the temple? Antichrist. The Antichrist. And who's the Antichrist sidekick? The false prophet. The false, the false prophet. prophet. Two prophet. witnesses. Two false witnesses. They're in the temple, the default mm -hmm. temple. Um, proclaiming one's proclaiming to be the Messiah, the other one's proclaiming that he is the Messiah, the other one's the Messiah, the Antichrist. Now, outside of the temple, outside, and we're going to see this in Revelation chapter 11, outside of the temple, you've got two more witnesses. These are true witnesses. You've got two false witnesses, two true witnesses. The two true witnesses are pointing to the Messiah, Jesus Christ. The two false witnesses are pointing to the false Messiah, little M, the Antichrist. So you've got this happening at the same time. So God is balancing it. He's counter counterbalancing it. So as the Antichrist is coming to the peak of his ministry, if you like, then the the um, the two witnesses are also at the peak of their ministry, and they cannot be killed until their ministry is complete. And we're gonna so at this time, at this, why don't we just jump straight over to chapter eleven of Revelation, and we can develop this. And this is that why. Makes sense, doesn't it, Mark? Like, yeah. That God doesn't leave the earth without a witness. Well, there's always the devil's account of There's a hundred, and there's the angels as well. So the angels in chapter fourteen. So what's happening? You've got the hundred forty-four who are preaching all the way through. You've got then at the latter part, you've got the the angels um, um, in chapter fourteen who are now preaching. The gospel and they're saying fear god and worship him and now you've also got the two witnesses who are preaching yeah. repentance they're dressed in yeah. sackcloth so there's a dead giveaway here so this passage here from um so keep your finger in, in zechariah also so this is why the temple is addressed first and then the witnesses and then the witnesses because the witnesses come about when the temple when the temple is built and the antichrist mm -hmm. takes his seat he's on the inside of a temple they're on the outside of a temple. Let's go over to um, because it's not the real temple. Uh, well, it's it's authorized because God. See, we see it in, in, in um, we see it in. It's just being taken over by bombs. Yeah, so the deception goes a long way. Look at look it? in chapter eleven, <laughs> Revelation. Right. Chapter eleven, Revelation. We see in verse one, and, and then I was given a measuring rod like a staff, and I was told to rise up and measure the temple of God and the altar. 
and those who worship there. So this is an authorized temple. Remember, God authorizes everything. God, God's sovereign yeah. over the whole thing. He gives the Antichrist dominion. Mm -hmm. The Antichrist, he sends the Antichrist. So um, Daniel chapter 7, he gives the Antichrist dominion. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, God sends the Antichrist. So God allows him to take this position for this time for the purpose of separating the truth from the false. That's what mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians is all about. So God authorizes his temple because that's his platform. That's the seat that it takes. And, of course, the seat is what? It's judging. He's ruling and reigning. That's, that's why he's, he's, he's a judge. So he's in the temple. And it's interesting, this statement here, that the, the temples measured, verse 1, chapter 11, Revelation, and those who are worshipping there, they're also taken into consideration. So who would be worshipping inside the temple? The, the Jewish Jews. people. The false, they? right, because they're worshipping Christ. So they're in the temple worshipping the Antichrist who's taken a seat within a, the tribulation temple. Now look at verse 2, but do not measure the outer course of the temple. Leave it out for it is given over to the nations and they will trample the holy city for 42 months and I will grant my authority to two witnesses and they will prophesy for 1,260 days in clothed in sackcloth. So the two witnesses are not in the temple, they're outside the temple. Now notice here that there's the, the verse 2, the, the instruction is not to measure, not to measure the outer courts. They're going to be trampled by the Gentiles. Now, Jesus said in Luke 21, in Luke 21, verse 24, that Jerusalem's going to be trampled by the Gentiles up until he returns. So that means these Jews are outside of the, the, the temple. Well, they, they, they're outside of the temple. They're in the temple courts where the Gentiles are going to be coming in trampling until Christ returns. They're preaching Christ to the nations, to the Jews and to the nations. Mm. They're Jewish. So Zechariah chapter 4, they're Jewish. Zechariah, uh, Revelation chapter 11, tells us here they're dressed in sackcloth. That's that's customary for Jews when, when going Morning. through a process of repentance or calling others to repentance. That's, 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 a, tradition, that's a Jewish custom, Jewish tradition. These are Jews. The people who say that they're one of the two witnesses, they've got rocks in their head. I've heard these say are that. Jewish, these are Jewish prophets. They're prophets. So you've got the 144,000 Jewish evangelists, 12,000 from each 12 tribe, not Jehovah's Witnesses, not America, not England, not they're Jews. 12,000 literal Jews from literal Jewish tribes. Each tribe, 12,000, 144,000. They're Jews. Now we've got the Jewish um, prophets, these two prophets dressed in sackcloth, preaching repentance. They're, at, they're coming towards, so this is Carlos, exactly what you were saying. They're the light of the world, right? Mm -hmm. The light of the world, the gospel coming through the Jews, which has always been prophesied that the gospel would be proclaimed to the Jews. Jesus comes from the Jews. We've got the gospels from the Jews. The oracles came from the Jews. The Jews preach Christ in the tribulation and the nations come to faith through the Jews preaching him. <laughs> that's why they join to the Jews and that's why they become known by God and then they are... Uh, um, in God's midst, they dwell with God, etc. They experience and and, uh, and and enjoy God's presence and glory throughout the, the millennium because of the Jews. So the Jews are preaching from the, these these two witnesses are preaching from the midway point, the midway point. So remember, these guys look over in chapter eleven, verse. 14. The second one was passed. Behold, the third one is coming soon. So these Jews turn up somewhere in between the first and second one. What are the two ways that, that this refers to? Oh, one, two? one of them is the army, is it? So Revelation chapter 8, verse 13. Three ways must come. So there are three trumpets left. So that's on the fifth, uh, coming into the fifth trumpet, the fifth trumpet, sixth trumpet, and seventh trumpet. So the three woes are the three remaining trumpets to come. So the fifth trumpet is the... Demonic horde? Locusts. The locusts. The locusts. Is it like a worldwide plague of locusts? Yeah. 
It yeah. is. And they only sting those who have got the mark. Yeah. Uh, and they, they um, are in, in agony. And that's when people say marks. they wish they could die, but for some reason they that's can't right. die because they're, they've got they're, the they're fleas treatment. from them. They're fleas from them, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, whatever. People, people try and sort of associate that with nerve gas and everything else, but no, they, these things come out of the pit. They yeah. come out of the pit mm. and, yeah, so and the leader is a polyon. Yeah. The leader is a polyon. Uh, so they're just demonic. Uh, so they're not drones, they're not helicopters, it's not made of gas. It's, this is this is an there could be some genetic hybrid. But it's interesting Coming that people want to die and they can't Coming die. The so they've got some yeah. kind of implant that means they've got exactly. biological. So it's this, part of that immortality thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, which would which would be connected to the mark, right? Because that's yes, you know absolutely. that's, that's yes. right. Well, transhumanism, we are God. So the Antichrist is saying, I am God, you can be like God, you can be like me. That's going to be the great, you know, the mm -hmm. great picture, isn't it? The big cell. Yes. So, so uh, this is where it's all linked. So, so that's a that's that's the first woe. The second woe following the first woe. The army. Ah, the army. So you've got the two hundred million amount of troops from chapter nine, but also chapter sixteen. What 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 do they do? They march towards what? Jerusalem. Megiddo, right? Megiddo. So they're trampling Jerusalem underfoot. They're marching into Megiddo. So these. So this is why we know that these prophets, these two prophets, are there then, because that second woe does not end, does not end until Christ returns, because it's when Christ returns that these, this army is at Megiddo, Armageddon, Jesus comes back then and deals yeah, with it. Yeah, isn't the third woe the silence? In and the third the woe is the return of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So why would the return of Jesus Christ be a woe? There's three woes. Woe to those because he has that hate of blade. Yeah, <laughs> so there it is. So, but what do these prophets do? So we see in verse 14 again, the second woe is passed, the third is still to come. So these prophets are inside of that second woe being passed. The second woe doesn't pass until Christ returns. The third woe so follows the, the second woe. Not the, first the latter half. So they're the latter half. So that's what this is saying. Well, that's when all the supernatural crazy yeah, stuff. Yeah, and, and it's exactly <laughs> right. And so now, now so we see... Time. Again, so what are they doing here in verse three? The, these two lampstands, these two lampstands. Remember, back to Zechariah, the works of Zerubbabel aren't the works of Zerubbabel. It's not by mind. It's not by power. And also, so we can see it's the Holy Spirit. We, there's a reference to the seven eyes. Of course, the seven candlesticks, same thing. It's a, it's a perfection. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. These are the two anointed witnesses, the two olive trees. These are the ones who are doing what? Prophesying. They're preaching repentance. What are they prophesying about? Jesus, coming is, coming Jesus is coming back. So what are they doing? They're warning, they're warning, they're warning, they're warning. So can you imagine? So within the temple and from the temple, this message is going out worldwide. That the Antichrist, he is God because he announces that I am God. He takes a seat in the temple and he says, I'm God. So you've got this guy saying, I'm God. But within the temple, and you've got, so you've got two witnesses saying that within the temple, two false witnesses. And outside of the temple, you've got the two true witnesses saying, yeah, no, he's not. Mm -hmm. And he can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. It must be so annoying for him. It would mm -hmm. just be a thorn mm -hmm. in his side. For the Antichrist, mm. it would be a th and Paul like said, that. as Paul said, you know, <laughs> I have a thorn in my side. You know, obviously it was people who were resisting the gospel. You know, that God take this away from this thorn in my side. He's, people keep resisting the gospel. And God says, My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. Mm. Now, what do we just see in Zechariah chapter four in relation to the well, bill? We don't know what Paul's thorn was. It could be that he's losing his side. Or no, well, the context is that because it was Simon. The sorcerer and, and oh, others, okay. the, the, the the blacksmith who were who were um, resisting him. Yeah. So, yeah. what do you think that is? There's a couple. Uh, I think the message was being hindered. The message was being resisted. So Paul was being um, oppressed because the message was being. Do you hindered. think it's demonic oppression? Oh, I, absolutely, but through yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. Now, in Zechariah chapter four, Zechariah chapter four. So, what did God say to Paul? My grace is sufficient, sufficient for you, right? Yeah. What did we see in chapter four? Grace grace mm -hmm. so grace first for the temple for the rebuild temple god's grace is sufficient for the temple rebuild number one secondly grace in reference to the two witnesses who are anointed the grace what do we know about the, the spirit of grace so zechariah chapter 12 verse 10 talks about when jesus comes across comes back they look at the one whom was pierced 
The spirit of grace draws them to repentance, gives them mercy and compassion and kindness, enables them to repent. Also in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, it talks about the spirit of grace. The spirit of grace is a one who gives us, affords us the ability or the invitation, extends that invitation, the gift of repentance, if you like, for us to be able to receive Christ. So acknowledge our sin, receive Christ and, and gain salvation. This is what's happening here, grace, grace. So within the tribulation, you've got this grace, incredible grace being extended to those who've been left behind, to those who are in the tribulation, to those who are surviving to this point, to be able to call upon the name of Christ. That's beautiful. Is what, it, is it, what does just it say, Christ, Christ? Christ? Oh, Chapter, um, So go back to um, Zechariah. Zach and Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 4. Not by spirit. And we see it in verse 7. Um, a great mountain before Zerubbabel. Oh, really? You should become plain and what should bring forward mm -hmm. the top stone amidst shelves of it, grace, grace to it. So what's this What's this great mountain here? What's this great mountain? So in verse 7, uh, chapter chapter 4, verse 7, Zechariah. What's this great mountain? So what's what's going on here? The people that are causing them not to be there. Okay, so go back to the literal rebuild of the temple. The great mountain is the hindrance. And we read more about that in, in Esther and Nehemiah. Uh, so the great mountain is those who were resisting. Now, in Haggai, the same was true. So the enemies of God's people came against them and they said they tried to convince them not to build the temple. They, they, they tried to bribe them and then they also um, um, they, they, they threatened them. Um, so don't build a temple, otherwise, whatever, whatever, you know. No, that's what, so that was the cause for them to stop. They become disheartened, they become distracted, they stop building the temple. So you've got this mountain of people. So people, it can't be done. So you've got the critics, the internal critics say, oh, you know, it can't be done. God silences all flesh, it says in the passage here, but chapter four, God puts a silence to all of it. The ones who said it can't be done, it's done. The outsiders who are trying to stop it, the mountain of resistance, God says, is no, that, I'm going to remove that as well. It's not by my, my human hands. It's by my might and my power, grace, grace. So it, so you now take that forward into Revelation chapter 11. Nothing, no mountain, no obstacle, obstacle, nothing, nothing can stop the two witnesses. And we see it. Go back to chapter 11. That's, yeah. That's that song. This Go back to chapter reads. 11. Yeah. We see in verse 4. So they're preaching for 1,260 days. We see it in verse 3 and we see in verse 2, it's 42 oh, months. Yeah. So 42 months is 1,260 days, which is both three and a half years. Yeah. So it's a latter three and a half years. And we see in verse 4, so we see that the uh, these two old trees are standing before the Lord of the earth, which is the same, exactly the same language. Exactly the same as Zechariah chapter 4, verse 14, stand before the Lord of the earth. What was the time difference between the Zechariah being written and John writing the Revelation? Long time. Yeah, 500, 500 600 years. Yeah, five, six Where John years. wrote first. No, Zechariah wrote first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zechariah, about yeah. 600 years earlier. Yeah. Um, so so look look at this, verse 5. If anyone would harm them, that's the two witnesses, fire will pour out of their mouths and consume their foes. If anyone would harm them, this is how they um, he is doomed to be killed. They have the power to shut the sky and the rain, um, and no rain will fall during the time of their, their prophesying, and they have the power over the waters to turn it to blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they desire. Uh, so nothing can stop them. They're, in, they're, they're unstoppable. So it's the grace that is extended through them. That is their message. Uh, to to return to me and I'll return to you. Uh, point the prophecy to point the Christ is coming. It's in between the the, the, the first and the second why pointing to the third why, which is the return of Jesus. It's all about the return of Christ. So the temple, what's the purpose of the temple? So the first temple, what was the purpose of it? To proclaim God, right? To 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 proclaim God, to make him known. Yeah, it's the, but but and so people would come into and the presence of God. They would get to know God. that's right. But that is to, to know God. People were to know their God. So the tabernacle, the purpose of the tabernacle, God wanted to reveal Himself. He wanted to become one with His people. He wanted them to dwell in His midst. That the temple was the same thing. The second temple was the same thing. The third temple, uh, in between the, the the second temple and the third temple, what is there? 
The church. The church, right? We're the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? And so the same thing. It's a, it's a place for God to dwell and also it's 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 um it's opportunity or uh it for, you know, it for, it's it's access and opportunity for those to come to know god to experience god mm-hmm. so it's all about coming into the presence of god dwelling with god dwelling where he is him dwelling where you are so and then of course in the third temple what happened in the third temple god's not there right no it's the false the, so the next temple after that he's there he's there so these he guys the here so so these guys He's there in the flesh so the, the, the mountain the mountain resisting so when we were in Zechariah chapter 4 there's a great mountain of resistance and God says I will move that mountain it's no it's no big deal so when Jesus says you can say that this mountain will be cast into the sea it's talking about oppression and activity hmm. yeah well when, when Jesus when Jesus said it's, it's talking about the impossibility the impossible mm-hmm. so when Jesus said that he was looking at a great structure that um Herod had built. And so what Herod did is he was a um, Herod or Herod? Herod. 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 So he was he was at um he was at um the other Herod. He he was at um um Caesarea. It's a beautiful place that are and he wanted to have a nice you know dwelling there, but he from there he wanted to be able to see Jerusalem. He wanted to see the Holy Hill. So he built this great structure. That said, they said it couldn't be done. The engineers of the day said it couldn't be done. But he did it anyway. He, he said, no, it can be done. It will be done. And, you know, do it. And they did it. And so from there, he could he could see Jerusalem. So when Jesus said, cast this great mountain, well, that's what he was talking about. He was talking about the great structure that had been built in the sea at Caesarea, looking over to the Holy Mountain. So if you just believe, if man could do this through his own initiative, then how much more can God do? And this is coming back to exactly Zechariah 4 here. It's not by man's strength. Yes, man is very capable. Man can do some great things. And the, 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 the language here in Zechariah 4 is, is military. You know, it's not by the strength of military that this is going to happen. It's, it's by my power and my, my might. I'm going to give the grace. I'm going to, to give the anointing. I'm going to do it. This is my work. It's not even it's not even something that, that you're motivated to do. You know, we, you started doing it and you fell back and you got distracted and you got this, you know, um, derailed by some threats and some whatever else, and then pursued your own interest, finding your own pockets, etc. I had to bring you back. When in, in Haggai, God says to um, the Jews, get back to work. So uh, return, rebuild, or else. <laughs> Just get back to work. If you do it, you're gonna prosper. If you don't, you're gonna be in poverty. And so God gets them back on track. So that flows on to this also. So it's the same thing. These guys, these two prophets, are going to have a mountain of resistance in the tribulation. The Antichrist is right next door, and he's going to do everything he can to stop them, but he can't. Anyone who tries to stop them, they operate in this amazing supernatural power. This is literal supernatural power. So chat, chat. <laughs> if, if they're there for the second half, and they're there to see the set first woe and then the second woe, but they actually, you know, die and they're yeah. resurrected. Yeah. It means they're like resurrected just before, like yeah, before right. Christ comes back because everyone that's exchanges right. before, gifts. Before, before. So it right. mustn't be too that's long right. before. Must that's be right. Close. Yeah. So it, would, so it doesn't say when, but it's, but no. it's, it, it says so there's a second. So the second woe ends. The second woe is passed. The second woe passes when the third woe comes in because it's the third woe that knocks out the second woe. But it just doesn't seem enough time for the exchange. It's only going to be three days. And, it's only know. three days. You're only lying on the street for three days. Yeah. yeah. The prophets. Yeah, yeah the, two, the two prophets. So but we'll get there. We'll yeah, get there. Yeah. Uh, so so let's let's think about the um, the identity of these two prophets. So we've, 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 we've spoken Moses about this before. There's, there's a couple of theories. Elijah. So yeah. Moses and Elijah, why would it be Moses and Elijah? Well, Elijah never actually. Because they didn't die. Die. Well, Moses, Moses did. Died. Moses did. The, the but his body was also represent the law and the prophets. Yeah, so did Enoch. Not. Enoch was taken up to Christ. Yeah. yeah. And it's Enoch and Elijah. If you think about it, might have a natural death. Yeah. But they're also at the transfiguration. Transfiguration. That's, that's right. Yeah. 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 Wow. So it, it it and also in the book of Revelation, chapter fifteen, is a song of Moses. Why Moses? Why not David? Why not someone else? Etc. So the. Uh, Malachi makes reference to Elijah, so you know it's. I think that's you know fairly 
um, fairly solid. He's got a secure solid. seat. <laughs> yeah. Like so we that. think, yeah. yeah. So, so we, we, we would, we would um, of course, the plagues that, um, that happened throughout uh, Egypt, very, very similar to the plagues that will happen here. In fact, they're, they're neck and neck. Uh, so there is a strong argument for Moses and Elijah. Others do say Enoch because he didn't die. Uh, Hebrew says, you know, once once to live and then you die and there's a judgment, et cetera. And so it was Enoch that was taken up, in a, you know, um, he was and he was not, and there was Elijah who was taken up in a, in a chariot. So they didn't die. They're the two that we know did not die, whereas Moses did die, but then his body was disputed over by um, Michael the archangel. So there is uh, a little bit of sway there in relation to whether it could be Moses or Enoch, but we do know it's Elijah. Elijah is one of them. Malachi tells us that. Uh, well, we, we would strongly su suspect that, that it is. So it will be as Elijah himself or someone coming in. I, 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 would, I would say it is those literal. So how does lines. that work? Like they born yeah. again? Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's a very good question. Or do they just appear Scripture like same. translating it? Yeah. Well, it, it, again, they, you know, they appear as the temple is rebuilt. That's when they appear. If they're there for the last, um, the last period, the last half of the tribulation. So they're there for 100, 1,260 days. That's three and a half years. So they're right there until the end. Right there until the end. So I would put it this way, Sharon. We, how they turn up, that's, you know, you know well, Jesus, think, Jesus, right? He ascended and then he reappeared, right? So he was, he wasn't, and then he was. So he did it. So well, given they were taken up, they could be just put back. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So that's what that's what my um. So that so they haven't been fully. They haven't died an actual death. So they yeah. can come back. And remember and the transfiguration. It was literal, literal Elijah, and it was literal Moses at the transfiguration. Mm. They were literally there. Mm -hmm. And so they were recognized straight up. Hey, this oh, is, yeah, this is them. Them. And so this will be the same here. So can you imagine this in the tribulation? You've got the literal, you know, prophets. They say, get say, around where they are, right? You know, it's, it's, it's <laughs> so just they appear. Just kind of, yeah, but they came, like in a yeah. sense, they kind of just, <laughs> for want of a better word, flew from heaven and appeared on earth and then disappeared mind. again. Yeah. yeah. Well, these guys will be around for a little bit longer. But but again, you know, but see, only the disciples, the three disciples, saw yeah. them. No one yeah. else did. Yeah, that's right. But this time, everyone will see them. Mm. So so he, he again, every mountain, right? Every mountain is going to be removed. Now we say, in, in we're now rebuilding the second temple. Oh, I can't happen. You know, the enemy is saying it's not going to happen. The Jews, the Jews were saying it's not going to happen. And then when it did happen, then the spies the day of small beginnings. It's like oh, this is rubbish compared to the old one because yeah, you don't worry about that. You know, you watch, you watch. Again, God moves every mountain. What is impossible for man, what is even impossible for man to comprehend, God does. That's what the whole passage is about. I'm going to do it. My spirit, my power, I will do it. Uh, I will, it, what, 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 what you say cannot be done, I'm telling you, it's already done. It's as good as done. My word does not return void. What I say is done, it's done. So this is what's going to happen in the tribulation. There is one other um, um, we just claim, if you like, or um, offering of who these two witnesses are, and I think it's drawing a very long bow, but it's uh, um, Gad, the seer, and Nathan. And the reason I say that, so from um, First Chronicles, so from First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 29, there is this reference of Samuel, Gad, and Nathan. Now, remember, Nathan was the one who confronted David, so... They, and, he, and he said to him, hey, you know, you're going to be judged. And, uh, and of course, you know, the kingdom was going to be divided and all that kind of stuff. And it was Gad that came in. So the second, so that was when um, um, David sinned with Bathsheba. And the second time David sinned, it was with the, um, the census, right? And so then it was Gad the seer who came in. And, and Gad the seer gave him offerings of, you know, one of three judgments. Well, he was the messenger. He wasn't the one who was facilitating the, uh, the judgment. But he was to say, he said, you've got one of three. Which one do you want? And so from that, from that, some would claim, and I think, you know, it's drawn a very long bone, whereas they would say they're the two witnesses, specifically from one, they one Corinthians chapter. One, one, one Chronicles chapter. What's that? They're witnesses against the world, aren't they? Well, against all one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's the other offering. But I would go with it's... Um, 
again, Moses saying and isn't Elijah, Elijah meant to be come before Christ? Yeah, that's right. So, so we know that. So, mm -hmm. so Elijah, Elijah is pretty solid. Mm -hmm. and, but then they say when they're talking about John the Baptist, that yeah, they the spirit of Elijah. Yeah, kind of called him Elijah. Well, that's right. He came in the spirit. And of Jesus, Elijah. yeah, that's right. And Jesus said, if you'd accepted him, then the prophecy would have been fulfilled. But because you rejected him, it's still yet to be fulfilled. Yeah, so um, that's in, uh, is that Mark? I think it's in Mark. Um, well, that kind of Jesus said. says that they come in the spirit of someone, then, yeah. doesn't it? it does. Like yeah, it but then you've got the transfiguration of the mount. Well, that's pretty solid. <laughs> it's common sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's not common. You're understanding that. It's one thing to say. Uh, we're, having, we're having a very great. Quite another thing to say. <laughs> yeah. like automatically means that well, witnesses. They were identified not. and they appear. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know. So that's not a mystery either. anymore. Look, look, look at look at this guy, and, and this is this <laughs> is going. I told you this is going to mm. this is going to be a um an interesting message. Mm. Sandy, I'm, I'm waiting for it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's going on, going on. So we see, look, they've got um this incredible power, which is. Very similar to what Moses had and Elijah had also. Um, and Enoch is not said to have these powers, but Enoch is very interesting because of his offerings in relation to uh, the book of Enoch, which is, of course, apocryphal, but still it's 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 still given credibility through Jew. So Was only re um, removed 400 years ago, is that right? Who's so that? The book of Enoch. For, written 400 years that ago. That was only removed from our Bible oh, right. 400 years ago. Um, so it was never in our Bible. Yeah, no, it wasn't in ours. There, 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 there was the Apocrypha, which I think is about 12 books that were in the original King James, 1611, yeah. Yeah. and they were removed uh, a few hundred years later, but they were they were part of the original. Why but there was a dispute between the Catholics and the Protestants. Blah, 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 why, and so they, was, why did they remove it? Yeah, there was a dispute yeah. between the Catholics and the Protestants, and then it was, there was, there was well, they call it the Apocrypha because it's like Apocrypha as in uh, dubious, you know, not not 100% certain that it is inspired by God. by God. Yeah, that's right. So there, there's, there's a question mark over it, big question mark. But they are referenced other, in um, in various places. Yeah. So because I have the opportunity, and I, I don't want to divert on this because this is when I'm going to make some discussions in something that is not related to what we're talking about. No. But, but, but I have read that book of Enoch. Yeah, it's very good. And, and, yeah. I, and I trace his knowledge and yeah. his amazing wisdom. Yeah. And yeah. I revealed everything to him, even right yeah. up he was the end just of the amazing. Song. But we, we, can, we, can, we can take it like this. I, um Carlos we, so the scripture is is God bread right yes yeah, but but we learn so so we have the scripture but we also have other references too we have writings outside of the scripture through um you know theologians and historians and and so on so you know, people like Irenaeus and Josephus and uh, heaps of them. so we we learn history and we, we gain much understanding from those books alongside we know we don't say that those things are inspired but they're still very useful so we can we can treat the uh, the, the uh, apocryphal books in the same way we can say we've got to keep in mind when we're reading those books that this is not categorized as it's not the canon it's not the inspired it's not classed as inspired by god but it's still useful so you don't throw it out but again you don't say god said necessarily mm -hmm. In the same way that you would this so okay. useful still yeah, look, look look at look at this further guys so, so after the um prophets they finished their ministry well we're still in chapter 11 of revelation they finished their ministry so in in verse 7 so after that finished uh it says here after they finished the testament the beast rises from the bottomless pit and he makes mm -hmm. war on them he conquers them and kills them so, so let's stop there Jaron, mm -hmm. sandy <laughs> the beast rises from the bottomless pit. The beast rises from the so bottomless can't be the antichrist. pit. No, he is the antichrist. What's he, he doing down there? Look, look okay, let's flick out. back. Let's flick back. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Let's so flick. Is, let's go forward. Isn't he already in the in the temple? Okay, let's go forward to Revelation thirteen. So this is this. So what we're seeing here in chapter eleven is not chronological. It's an overview, right? Ah, uh, okay. So look in verse in chapter thirteen. We see that verse three is talking about the Antichrist. It's the first beast on his head seems to have a mortal wound, 
and his mortal wound is healed, and the whole world marveled and they followed him. Why did they marvel? Because he gets this, this he was wound under death, and, and somehow he he's recovered. And that's when he gets possessed by the devil. There you okay. go. So now look Same. down further again. Look down further again. Not in verse 12. Oh. Verse 12. Uh, so this is the second beast. It exercises authority um, of the first beast. That's the Antichrist. So the, the false prophet exercises the authority of the Antichrist. In the presence of makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose mortal wound was healed. So... In other words, this is an amazing thing. This is not someone who got a little bit sick or who had, you know, he got a little bit hurt. This is someone who received something under death and then came back. Watch this again. Uh, we see it in <clears throat> verse 14. They, they're doing these great signs and wonders in the same way that the false prophet, the, the, uh, the true prophecy of two witnesses, they're, they're doing great signs and wonders. And then you've got these two false prophets that are doing great signs and wonders. We see it in verse 14, they're doing great signs and wonders. So we see it in 13 as well, they're, making, they're doing these great signs. Uh, and then as it goes on, um, the, so there's an image and he's telling him to worship the beast whose wound was healed. He was healed, he was wounded by the sword, yet lived. Now take that over to chapter it's 17. Chapter that. 17. <coughs> And we see down okay. in, ah, look at, um, so verse 8. So the beast that you saw was and is not and is about to, and is about to rise from the bottomless pit and go into destruction. And then we see it again down further. Um, it talks about the book of life and from the foundation of the world. Uh, those are marvel at the beast because it was and it is not and is to come. Verse so 10. So there. 8 and 10. Sorry. 8 and 10. So this beast, this beast, it was uh, and it was not. He and then it is again. And then he what does that sound like to you? Christ. Jesus Christ. He was and he was not and he's coming again. He's using counterfeit language here. Mm -hmm. So he receives a mortal wound. It's three times we see it receives a mortal wound. It, in chapter 11, it comes out of the pit. What's he doing in the pit? How did he get there? Well, he received a mortal wound. And then we that's see so it again. Oh, he's, so he died okay. that's why he's down now, there. Now, the argument is that the devil, now we, chapter 12, we know Satan gives him his power. We also know from 2 Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, that Satan gives him his power. He's working with the activity of Satan. So we, so we, the argument would be that Satan's resurrected him, right? But then we would say, well, Satan doesn't have that power. But we also know from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that God sends the Antichrist. So God is sovereign over all. So whatever so happens, resting? whatever happens, this Antichrist receives. Hey? Does that mean that God gives him his life back? God sends him. God authorizes it. So whichever way it goes, God is sovereign over all, whichever way it goes. But what we can see here in this passage, he comes out of the pit. Nothing goes, nothing good goes into the pit. Nothing good comes out of the pit. He's in the pit. He comes out of the pit. Twice we see he comes out of the pit. Yes, yeah, so God allows him. Jesus went out. down and came out. He wasn't in the pit. This is the bottomless pit. Jesus wasn't in there. He so just, so what, what we see, what we see in the what we see in the book of Revelation here. That we see out of the pit comes Apollyon and also the locusts, demonic locusts. We also see the four angels come out of the pit who lead the, the 200 million mounted troops. Now we see the Antichrist comes out of the pit. So he was and then he was not and he rises again. He rises out of the pit. He's received a mortal wound. The whole world's marble. So this is not some scratch. This is not a paper cut. This is he's 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 copped a deadly it's blow. A head wound, isn't it? He's copped a this deadly is blow. Between the trip. Yeah. So towards somewhere towards the end. Somewhere, somewhere towards, towards the, end. the end. So this is what happened. Now back in chapter eleven, this is this these. It's all about these two. Um, uh, again, these two uh, witnesses. So look here. What happens? So back in chapter so chapter eleven, verse seven. We see that the beast rises from the bottomless pit and then it makes war on, that's the two witnesses, it conquers them and it kills them and their bodies lie in the street of the great city, symbolically is called Sodom and, and, and Egypt, where the Lord was crucified. So these two witnesses 
die in exactly the same place Jesus Christ was witnessed with, was crucified. They're there for three days in the same way Jesus Christ was three days in the grave. Mm. Then they rise again in the same way Jesus Christ did. And what and what happens when when they rise again? He says so. So we see going down. Why don't we just somebody quickly read again? Maybe from uh, verse nine through to um, verse thirteen. Who wants to read that? Nine to thirteen. Okay. Okay. For three and a half days, some from the peoples and tribes and languages and nations will gaze at their dead bodies and refuse to let them be placed in a tomb. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and make merry and exchange presents because two prophets have been a torment to those who dwell on the earth. But after the three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered them and they stood up on their feet and great fear fell on those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies watched them. And at that hour, there was a great earthquake and a tenth of the city fell. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake and the rest were terrified and gave glory <laughs> to the God of heaven. So right at the end, this is right at the end of the tribulation. So they're killed. They're in the street for three days. They're exchanging gifts. They rise again. Everyone, great fear falls upon everyone. And it, so it said, we see in verse, um, we see in verse 11, that great fear falls on all of those who see them. And we see then again in verse 13 that um, the rest were terrified and they gave glory to God. Uh, so what's happening here? So they, they rise again, great fear, fear falls on everyone, and, th and then they hear those words, come up here, rapture. We've heard those words before in Revelation 4, chapter 4, verse 1, come up here, come up here. They watch them disappear, and then they're terrified, and they give glory to God. So through this, through this, mm. God, so they've been preaching repentance for, for three and a half years, and, and, and at the end, a little bit like Samson, really, you know, the, the, his final day was greater than all of his other deeds put together. So through their resurrection and ascension, so the Antichrist is also, he's resurrected, and the whole world marvels at him and go, wow, what's this here, the deadly wound, and he's, he, was, he, he was, and he was not, and he is again. The whole world's marveled, and, and now God does, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll better that. And God does, it the same, does the same thing, and then... They go up into heaven while everyone's watching. Now great fear falls upon them and they give glory to God. That's when the second way finishes, which finishes because the third way comes in, which is the return of Jesus Christ, which takes us back to, to Zechariah chapter um, 12, verse 10, where everyone, they look upon Christ and then there's grace, grace, the spirit of grace comes upon them. There's the grace. And they're allowed to call upon the name of Jesus. As they see him, they look into his face visibly, they repent, and then they're saved. Mm. But some don't. Revelation chapter 6. Some would rather go into the cliffs and have the rocks fall on their faces. So this is a ministry of these two witnesses. This is what Zachariah so sees. To believe. This is what Zachariah, and it's all to do with the temple. So you've got the defiled temple, out of that defiled temple is the proclamation that the Antichrist is God. Outside of that temple comes from the comes a proclamation from the two olive branches, the two anointed ones, the two witnesses, that no, Jesus Christ is God and he's coming back and you better repent. There must be three years, though, between when the beast rises back out of the pit and into the Antichrist. That's when he proclaims to be God, doesn't he? I would say that the that, this, that happens, that the, the, um, the beast will claim to be God uh, at the halfway point. So yeah. when a tribulation temple is built, that's when he proclaims yeah. to be God. That's when he proclaims to be God. So, and so you've got the ministry now of the two witnesses. Which so, must go for another three years. Yeah. yeah so you've got, so you've, what's happening here so you is you've got. your view on that. Yeah, that's what I said at the beginning. So all so your books are wrong. No. <laughs> <laughs> They'll Sorry. put this disclaimer. It's just a little, it's just a, it's just a slight adjustment. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's. So what you've got is you've got these two false witnesses proclaiming. Why do you think that? Why do you think you've? Why have you changed your mind about that? <laughs> because of what we just saw here. So these two, these mm -hmm. two are preaching Christ like right up, right up until the second woe is passed. Right. 
So the second woe is not passed until Christ returns. The second woe is a 200 million gallon trip, right? Mm. The third woe is a return of Christ. These guys are around until then. Jerusalem is being trampled on the foot until that time. When the 200 million dollar troops come into Jerusalem, they're going to be trampling it, right? Yes. That's fine. And, of course, it just, when you, when you think about it, you've got these two false witnesses. But that means they're there when the, the temple is built. They're doing yep. their mission the temple is built, not the it building. Built. That's right. So second part. Second but it's part. hard to believe after all that that people still refuse Christ. They to run to the rocks and want the rocks to fall on them instead. The that no, and this is and this is why you've got this reference here. This is the city Israel is symbolic of Sodom and Egypt. So what happened in Sodom and Egypt? So they saw they saw it. They, Egypt saw the, the 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 plagues. Even the magicians said, "Hey, this is God." Even Pharaoh said, "This is God." Have mercy on me. Pray. You mm. think it's God, but not want it. Mm. Not that want God. Mm. And then, of course, um, Sodom, they had righteous law preaching at the gate, mm. and they wouldn't listen. Same thing. Is this the same Sodom and Gomorrah? Yeah, Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah. yeah. So they had righteous law preaching at the gate, and they wouldn't listen. And so the same so, thing. So you've got these two, you've got these two witnesses preaching in the place likened to Egypt, likened to Sodom. Preaching righteousness, preaching Christ, up against the um, this great mountain of um, opposition, which is the Antichrist and the false prophet, who can't touch them until their ministry is finished. It's they're both operating in great signs and wonders. At some yeah. point, the Antichrist is resurrected. Then these guys are resurrected. So what the, what what Satan does, God yeah. does. So yeah, you know, well, we'll trump that. So the, the second half of the of the tribulation, the great tribulation, that that's really the real supernatural, full on time, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Like yeah the yeah. first half's more natural disasters. Than... Yeah, yeah. Well, there will always be, you know, that element of, you know, the demonic. It's, it's, it's definitely the young. behind all of it. There's yeah. yeah. a lot of tense. Yeah. 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 But isn't the first well, half of the tribulation yeah. like? Isn't the very first way a third of the earth is gone? Mm. Isn't it? Uh, for, yeah, you've got. Um, that could be a nuclear bomb, though. Yeah, a quarter, a quarter of wiped out through the four proper enforcement, but that's throughout the whole of the, the time. And then you've got through the trumpets, oh, you've got a third and a third and a third and a third and so on. Mm. So with each trumpet, there's a third of something that's mm. destroyed, which is obviously every whatever it is, whether it be human life or vegetation or whatever, um, water, um, um, animals, livestock. It, it's still going to have a huge effect on humanity yeah. and uh, their no, survival, sure. the ability to survive. At the moment, if I may add to this, I mean, this is something that we can talk about once we finish this, but I just being um, uh, aware, being made aware, <laughs> that uh, there's a very likely um, encounter with a big asteroid that is heading to the planet. Within the next few days, uh, this week, days. You're talking about days. Not when was in the revelation? Yeah, I know. You, you, I'm, I'm talking about an astronomical. You can you can Google this if you want to, but it's just amazing that uh, all this is happening at a time Shine. that is just we are in the border age of yeah. here and there and nowhere at the same time. And I, uh, one of the things that I've been praying about is that we all have eyes to see yeah. and ears to hear. Shine. Because uh, there is a lot of deception, and you mentioned uh, in what you just said a little while ago that God, um, with all these things that what, the wars going on, and, and, and the false prophets coming in, and all the signs out there for us to protect this big fire to extinguish absolutely everything, mm -hmm. and that is the grace of God which we, we, to be to bring back everyone. Mm -hmm. Who believes in him to have eternal life yes. and that's something that uh, it's uh i, I follow it's nothing what you said in the words that you said it but it really uh, it really touched me because i've been praying about this that we'll have light to see and a nice to see and he used to hear so and this is something that uh that is from through the scriptures and it's uh, it's a warning for all of us to listen and maybe coming louder and louder. That's right. Uh, the megaphone to wake us up. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, just so I don't forget, Sandy, uh, River, uh, Zechariah chapter 14, um, verse 10, where it talks about the whole land should be turned or plain um, from Giva to Raymond, south of Jerusalem, but Jerusalem shall remain aloft on its site oh, from yeah. the gate of Benjamin. So obviously Jerusalem, that's where the temple is going to be, so it's going to be aloft. So it's going to come down, it's going to be aloft from there. Is that the word they use, aloft? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jerusalem will be. So it'll be above the earth, so in the millennium. On its yeah. Site. <clears throat> yeah. Above the earth. Above the earth, yeah. So it's going to be protected. So this is why, so the ones who say, the ones who are in their glorified bodies, they'll be able to go in and out without um, restriction. They have full access. But the millennials, they will not. They can come once a year, but they can't actually come into the into the Holy City. They can look up at it, and then they will learn the way that God and people have followed, but they won't have access to it, not until the eighth day. But, of course, the eighth day. Uh, Rudy, what happens on the eighth day with the temple? There's no temple, you say. There's no temple. temple. Jesus is the temple. He is the light. Revelation is twenty-two. Okay, so so what do we what, what do we learn? What do we learn from uh, Revelation from Zechariah chapter four? I've been trying to say and that. in light of Revelation chapter eleven, what's the big idea? What's the big takeaway here? What is it? Get right, repent. No, no. Well, what's it pointing towards? Yeah, Christ is coming back. Jesus Christ. But it's all about Jesus. And what's and what's the, what's the message? What's the Don't. message? Starting off in chapter one, verse three. Come back to me. Return to me, and I'll return to you. It's all the way through. It's the same for same for same for same. All the way through. What he's doing, he's taking something natural. He's springboarding two hundred, uh, two and a half thousand years into the future. Our time now, just in front of he us. He wouldn't have known that though. Would it? No, he would not. But again, as 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 it was for Daniel, so so it is. So, just so it was. So it is for the uh, prophets. In the same way, the prophets were saying. Mm -hmm. What is this? What is this? Daniel didn't know. They didn't know. Daniel, Daniel was told, close up the book for many days from now. The wise will understand. The wise. Who are the wise? Us, who have the full canon, who can look back through the uh, New Testament lens or spectacle, if you like, and we can, we can, we've got the prophecies coming together. We've got the first part of the prophecies that have come together, the second part of the coming together, we're living it. So we are we are wise why because we hear we can see it we can make the connection we can draw we can we can um, connect the dots so we can say hey we can see that what was said then it's happening now oftentimes we 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 when um, prophecy is being filled or supposedly being we'll filled we can say it this way this looks like that so we can say. For instance, um, what's happening over in um, Russia at the moment, we can say that looks a little bit like Ezekiel 38, 39 prophecy, but we can't say it is that until it's happened. But with regards to, of course, all of the prophecies in relation to Christ and the rebirth of Israel and all that, we can say that was that, that was because it, it happened and mm. we saw it. So looking forward at prophecy, we can, we, can, we can speculate, but we can't say that's actually that until it's happened. So for them, no. But for us, we have this great benefit of being able to say a good portion of these prophecies have been fulfilled. And because we can now connect the dots, we've got the book of Revelation, so we've got the full picture. And we can say, yeah, this is that. So we, they didn't have Revelation chapter 11 to be able to make that connection they can, and compare and then to be able to look into, you know, the tribulation, having some understanding of what that's going to look like, how it's going to um, play out, etc. Et well, the so fact of when, when Israel was born in one day and the nation of Israel formed, yeah. and then you look at like, um, you know, the 20th century and into the 21st century, the rise of technology and knowledge and, and yeah, um, you know, the birth pains, I guess, absolutely, yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, and the, the globalization, of yeah, the world. all of that, everything's happening pretty full on, yeah. So the big takeaway, the big takeaway here, the big takeaway, and, and, and we should have really, you know, picking up from chapter three, flying into chapter four, chapter three, what, what is it? So you've got Joshua, the high priest, who represents Israel, Jesus. but it's also Joshua and Jesus, the same name, Jesus representing us, standing there in our place, etc., cetera, uh, taking on our sin, then, of course, taking those, exchanging those filthy rags for clean garments. So you've got all of that, chapter three. This is... This is God's hope yeah, for Israel and yeah. for us, for us, for mm -hmm. all. God would have none perish. God would have none um, be damned. I mean, that, they just didn't get that at all. No, they didn't. But but many in the church don't get it either. 
but say chapter three, all about standing before God on that day, having exchanged filthy rags for clean garments. Now, it's like you've got this message of salvation now booming through chapter four, taking us through into the tribulation, Revelation chapter 11, grace, grace, repentance, prophecy, pointing at Christ, Christ is coming. Get ready, get right. That's the message. Return to me and I'll return to you. Hallelujah. That message is all the way through. Jesus spoke in parables so that you know the wiser get it and the wiser wouldn't. Yeah. The same with prophecy, man. It is. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, but I'm you'll sorry, get there are, there are multitudes confused and there are. There's many, many. But it's, but it, but it's common sense, isn't it, really? Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So not common sense. Well, well, <laughs> All right. Any, any, anybody, anybody else or anything else? Anybody want to add? Doesn't, um, anybody want to add or take away? Doesn't the don't word say? Don't add or take away from this word. <laughs> but doesn't the word say in the final days that people don't want to learn? Because you need to study this. You just can't read it and think you know it. You have to study it. It's not. But but no. also we're given, we're, we're given teachers. Yes. To explain the word, That's so right. we can't all study prophecy like this, like Mark has. No, that's right. It'd be very difficult. But but it Extremely. comes. But but the scripture also says, isn't it? You know that we're all different parts of the body. But doesn't you know, it so say we, everybody's got something to contribute? Yes. You know, the, the finger yes. and the toe are different. The eye and the ear and a different, all different, having different functions, different gifts. But it doesn't help the body of Christ when teachers teach different things. But it says, oh, keep the Bible open. Keep the word not open helpful because time. no, it's not. No, it's not. It's it's not the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. No, it's and people are being dumb. Everyone's been given the Holy Spirit, and you bear yeah. witness to when you hear the truth or not. And no yeah. one's got it all right. Did you know that so IQ everyone has to use their right? Except for me. I, although I didn't oh, make one for right. I didn't make. I had to make one for me. They think they are right. But the know, average but that's, that's IQ, and they can't all be right. That's exactly right. That's why people are in pride. But but and then again, not, but then but then it's 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 also you. So you look at the primary things, primary, secondary. I always go. With. So the primary things, right? The fundamentals. They, they we have to agree on those things. You know yes. who Christ is, what He did, yes. how we must respond, etc. Yes. That's a fundamental. That's a salvation yes. issue. Yes. There are lots of secondary issues. They're not salvation matters, yes. and 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 they, it. The, it's good for us to discuss those things in a healthy way, but of course, you know, it's got to be in a, in a, in a respectful way. Um, where there, there are the things that the primary issues, they will divide one from the other, and they should. Yeah. Uh, well, this is the meat of the word. Yeah, which yeah, is common sense. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah so whether you're anal, Indies, free meal, Indies post online, meal, Indies online. whatever meal, it doesn't really matter. Hi, Indy. Indy. As long as you've got the crossword. Hi, Indy. How are you? Yeah. Yeah, no. This is in in into everybody is um from the call. You're muted. She's oh, you're you're muted. To... You have to turn your mic on. She's got the baby in her mouth. Ah, yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hi. In... Hi. Indy, Indy's coming from the pool. Have you... like... We've got yeah. your photo. Your photo's on the wall behind you, so they oh, can yeah. all see you. Oh, yeah. Beyond, well, yeah. no, behind yeah. behind her because she's facing me. She's oh. a bit yeah. <laughs> so your photo's on the wall there. They can all see you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Indy's in the yellow. Point to her. She's got the yellow one jacket on. That's it. <laughs> yeah. She's from India. I mean, from the pole. From the pole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Welcome. Good to see you. Oh, wow. Yeah, nice to see you all. Just I see Mark only. <laughs> yeah. can, can we flip the camera around? Yeah. There's, 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 Hi, uh, there's a few Wendy. others. So there's Wendy. Hello. Uh, oh, Hi, so Sharon. 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 <laughs> Hello. Hey, Thomas, Gary, Carlos, and Debbie. Hey. Hello. Oh, nice to meet you all. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. All right. So, um, any, anybody else want to add any, add, add or take away? That's so, in saying. all this, so we've got the temple that's been rebuilt and the two false prophets are in there. Uh, the tribulation in the tribulation, yeah, yeah. 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 Once, once the tribulation, yeah. once the temple so, has been rebuilt, then yeah, that's exactly. where Christ takes a seat. Yeah. yeah, and so the dome of the rock yeah. does that say on the outer court? No, that'll be that'll be that'll be, that'll be, removed. That'll be yeah, yeah. Okay. that'll be replaced by the temple. Okay, that would yeah. be an interesting yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so a lot of that's to happen. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. 
Where but does it'll, have, it'll happen suddenly when it does yes. happen. It'll just, it'll be a quick work. Yeah, it'll be quick. Yeah, so the yeah. um, uh, Rabbi Glick, he... Um, Is there any mention the, of that in the Bible in the sense of reference to that? The exchange? Yeah. So, right. No. There's no the, 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 the People speculate, and, and I think probably... Um, I would go with an earthquake. So okay. there, there were earthquakes throughout the tribulation, the beginning, throughout, and at the end. And uh, so an earthquake, wherever anything significant is going to happen with Christ when he, you know, he came, and of course, and he, and, he, and he left, there was earthquakes and so on the cross, he was an earthquake, etc. So I think an earthquake will, will do the job, and the Dome of the Rock is on a fault on a fault line. So there yes, is a lot yeah. of speculation outside of even people who are, you know, um, interested in Bible prophecy who were saying that, yes, it's on a fault line and it's not a matter of, um, of if but when. It's yes. going to go at some okay. point. That, and so when that happens, then there's a, there's a, there's a great opportunity. That to, solves that problem. Yeah. But yeah. that's where Christ was crucified. So that's where the temple's going to be. And yeah. that's where these two prophets are preaching from. Yeah, that's but not within, without. But interestingly, interesting as we said before, the ones who are worshiping in the temple, it, they're noted, they're noted. So they're measured alongside also. So they're taken, they're taken account. So remember in Zechariah uh, chapter four, the spirit, the seven eyes, the Holy Spirit is roaming the world. So it's yeah. it's, it's ranging the world, and it's taking stock of, of who's doing what, who's responding to what, the message that's coming through specifically now, the two the two anointed ones. In the tribulation, grace, grace, repentance, prophecy, Christ is returning. The spirit is roaming, right? Who's 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 responding? The spirit is sealing. Mm. So that happens throughout the whole of the tribulation. So what we're seeing here is just a phenomenal time. Mm. And people are, and we, we know from Revelation chapter seven that the model millions, countless millions, are coming to faith through the witness of the um, the hundred forty. 4,000, but now you've got also, we see the two witnesses, the great fear falls upon everyone. They're terrified and they give glory to God. So right. through their ministries, countless millions come to faith in Christ Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is roaming, ranging the world, sealing those in whom do come to Christ. And we then we see in Zechariah yeah. chapter 12, that even when Christ returns, which is what the two witnesses have been priming people for, this is what's happening, this is what's happening, this is what's happening. And we appear to go, yeah, that's what they said, there he is. Oh, we bow down and we worship him. Yeah, yeah, the same. In, into, the, into the millennium you go. Mm. Fantastic, isn't it? Where is grace, grace. That's the message, grace, grace. But you know what? Judgment always follows grace. Grace was in, uh, There was grace in every dispensation, always followed by judgment. We're in the age of grace, which is followed by the tribulation. But even in the tribulation, there is still grace. Yeah. It's, yeah. Where is it that it says that um, people in these days before the rapture will not want to hear the word of God, will be dumbed down? Is that uh, in Daniel? Yeah, you, no, you're talking about... Um, um, Paul talks about yeah, this in uh, Corinthians. Yeah, yeah, it's right. Uh, Timothy is Israel. Right. Timothy, it's um, is it one Timothy four three. Um, yeah, yes. they won't be able to endure sound doctrine. Um, they'll, yeah. they'll have itching ears. They want teachers telling what they want to hear. And and Second Thessalonians chapter two is where uh, God's talking about the Antichrist take, coming in. He's taking up his seat in the um, rebuilt tribulation temple. God sends the Antichrist for the purpose uh, because people did not love the truth. Mm. And so God then sends the Antichrist uh, to seal their, uh, their fate, essentially, so to hand them over to... Um, illusion. to it sends, yeah, it says that... Uh, damnation, delusion, condemnation, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it is a hard issue, isn't it? Like, yeah. Well, but I, I'm not going to, you know, but when, you know, I wanted to believe there was a God, when I was saying, I wanted to believe it was true. But there's people out there that do not want there to be a God mm. and hate God really, and hate the idea of morality. But they don't well, throughout, throughout the, the tribulation, reason. people, so look over and so, so look, look at um, chapter 16 very quickly. Look at chapter 16. Yeah, Revelation chapter 16. Look at, look at this. Revelation chapter 16. We see, um, say, from verse um, 8 through to, say, 11. We said a fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and was allowed to scorch the people with fire, and they, they they were scorched with a fierce heat 
and they cursed the name of God who had power over the plague. They did not repent and, they gave, and, and give him glory. So they curse God. Instead, they so that it's not that they don't believe in God. They curse him. And then it goes so on. Who, who they were cursing. It goes on. A fifth angel, um, a fifth angel pulled out his bowl on the throne of the beast and the kingdom was plunged into darkness. The people gnaw their tongue and anguish and they curse God of the heavens for their pain and their sores and they did not repent of the deeds. So they know. They know they would rather curse God. And Revelation chapter 6, they would hide themselves in the caves and have the rocks fall in their faces rather than repent. Mm -hmm. So it's not a matter of not knowing, not believing. Or well, not having enough evidence. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a matter of the heart, exactly what mm -hmm. Sandy said. Mm -hmm. I also had an experience with a friend of mine that I went to university with mm -hmm. because we both studied the same thing and mm -hmm. she was actually my girlfriend mm -hmm. when I, at that time. And uh, we were boyfriend and girlfriend, I should say. And then all of a sudden, she, she's been always a very uh, scientifically trained mind. Yeah. And I just wonder, you know, these, these people, she had the opportunity to educate herself beyond the, the, the <clears throat> beyond belief. And she was awarded one of the most prestigious, if not the most prestigious award that a, a, a student can have which is to be recognized publicly in the, with the government and, and all that. And she has, she became a scientist mm. and she now has left the world of science and now she's doing something else. The reason I'm saying that is because we were talking about this because she was amazed at that the way I have come back from where I was doing. She said, it's your, I, I think it's what you believe in, you know, because she doesn't call him God, God. He just knows that she told me her, her, her own words. Once you're gone, you're gone. You're dead. You, you come from dust, you go back to dust, and that's it. There's no for now, there's no heaven, there's no heaven, there's no nothing. I said, can, can you, you have the most. That's irrational. It's irrational, but she's been awarded this amazing prestigious thing that is putting her ego to the top of no one knows this better than me because no one has been able to achieve what I have. Yeah. And all of a sudden they find the greatest ignorance yeah. in the face of the planet. And the same happened with Dr. Schmidt, who is in the Australian National University. He won the Nobel Prize in Physics yeah. uh, last year. Confessing to be wise, the final. And all of a sudden, he, the first thing yes. that he goes is that there's no God, there's no nothing. This is like, this is my witness. The gospel these of Christ is have, foolishness to those who These care. people are That's delusional. Right. And, and, yeah, and no, so intelligent, to, like high intelligence, and they're very highly intelligent. They're highly intelligent, but, but it's they make them an idol dumb. of their own intelligence, which makes them a fool in the eyes yes. of God. It's just, I just see it all the time. I mean, mean even one well, classic yeah. example of that yeah. is Elon yeah. Musk. <laughs> you know, like he's very intelligent enough. Yeah, so I've heard him talk about spirituality and God and everything, and he's completely clueless. Oh, yeah. You know, spiritually, he's completely yeah. clueless, and yet, you know, he's an extremely intelligent, very powerful, very high, you know, high achieving mm -hmm. man. But yeah. people, People, um, you know, collapse those two things together. <laughs> so intelligence is not the same as spirituality. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yes. Like you can be intelligent and not spiritual, but mm. you can be dumb and spiritual too. You know what I mean? Like God doesn't need our intelligence or our dumbness, you know, yeah. or our ignorance. Yeah. It's like spirituality is like a different marker, yeah. you know, and you can be intelligently spiritual or you can be ignorantly spiritual. Yeah. But pe people collude the two and think just because you're intelligent, you're, you're yeah. up there yeah. spiritually, and you're not. Sure. And yeah. you can be incredibly yeah. intelligent, but I'm not know God at yeah. all, you want to which is sad, right. very sad. We're going to turn the uh, recording off now, guys, but um, for the guys who are alive, um, by all means, stay on. So uh, anybody else watching after this, um, thanks for tuning in and see you next week. Thanks. God bless you.